All right, guys, it is NT Day today, um, and Kevin and I have decided to do a separate episode on NT Day. Um, so if you want to see what that entails and everything that we get up to, make sure to check that one out. Um, but yeah, we'll just continue from after NT Day from here. Okay, about a week ago, we um, when we were in Catherine, Kev ordered one of the fan resistors, and they said they'd get it in from Darwin, and then we went to go pick it up, and it wasn't there. Couldn't get it in. Anyway, because um, we're in Darwin now, we're just going to go pick up that fan resistor from Burson, so we're about five minutes out. Um, yeah, we'll go and pick up the fan resistor and I think we're well, gonna pick up the wheel bearings as well yeah, yeah wheel bearings as well um, and get some stuff for the car right, we just picked up the fan resistor and the other other parts as well or the wheel bearing yeah, the fan resistor type of grease two wheel bearings and a wheel bearing nut socket because they're special you can just use screwdrivers but I'm pretty uh, Inexperienced? Oh, I was fussy. Fussy, right? <laughs> I thought you could say inexperienced, so you can't use a screwdriver. Sorry. <laughs> well, he's offended. <laughs> well, this is pretty basic. It's just this little thing here. Basically, me uh, heater fan and aircon fan only works on the top speed because this resistor bit is busted, so it doesn't change the resistance to then allow the fan speed to go one, two, three. It only goes on four. It's just flat out, so. Pretty common for controls apparently. Yeah, very common. Um, it was doing just three and four, so I didn't think it was this because normally they just stop all together and you only have number four. But yeah, it's only on number four now, so obviously Trusty it's a socket set from King Chrome, not yeah. sponsored. Yeah, love King Chrome. It's best uh, value for money, I reckon. That and SP tools. You like C well, you used to like Sit Chrome as well. Yeah, all that sort of thing. I'm not a snap on man, like. I think you pay way too much for what they are. But I have unplugged it. It's just got that. It's a bit of dust in there too. Uh, there's only two screws. Hold it in and and you pull it out. Oh, yeah, it's all burnt. Oh. So the circuit board's all burnt there. There you go. Where's the new one? Just there. Oh, yeah. Wow. Look at the difference when that focuses. Yeah. Oh, there's plastic. It's hard it to anyway. see. But... i just double check it's the same one because it says if it's opened, you can't return it. Definitely looks like the exact same one. Until you open it. Oh, oh that's already open. Alright, so. Yep, that looks pretty spot on. Goes in that way. Nice and shiny. Ooh, the claw. Clips in like that, and then you have to. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's, it's sitting there. I've got to hold it, <laughs> and then I'll put the two screws in and plug it in and see if it works. Just like that, quick two-minute job. It's already screwed back in. That one can go What's in the that bin. What's that plug for? Yeah, I've got to plug it back in. Turn the key. That's plugged in. Yeah, turn the key. All right, works on four. Yeah, works on one. Yep. Yep. Beautiful. Awesome. How's that, hey? Good work, Mr. Oh, it's easy to find good help. All right, little update for the day. Uh, we went for a little swim in the pool and just came back and sat down and relaxed for most of it. Um, the time is 5.30, so Kev, I'm not actually that hungry, but Kev's going to go have a schnitty um, with Craig, the guy we met. Um, and yeah, then we'll um, do our Territory Day stuff, which stay tuned for that video. All right, guys, the time is 12.45 and we have an appointment at Crocosaurus Cove at 5 p.m. because we're doing the Cage of Death. But you do have to be there half an hour early um, to check in and do your safety briefing and everything. And then on top of that, the entry that we did um, paid for for the Cage of Death also pays for the whole Crocodile Park. So obviously we want to get there a little bit earlier so we can explore absolutely everything because our session is the last of the day so we can't explore after it. Um, so we also need to go and get, um, it's called, what was it called? Yeah, Rain Repel. Um, and you can get it from super cheap and that and apparently it's really good for gopros um, to stop them from having water droplets constantly on the screen and i found that when we dip our gopro in the water and bring it back up the droplets sort of stay on the screen and it um, ruins the video a little bit so i'm just going to go and get some rain repel it's quite cheap i think it's like ten dollars or so um see if that works for the gopro so we can get some good footage of the croc underneath um and then yeah kev doesn't have a scuba diving or um like snorkeling mask 
and they recommend a mask or goggles so that you can actually go under in the um, tube to see the croc. So we'll see if he's changed his mind. He did say he just wanted to share mine and we'll just take turns, but Kmart sells them for like five bucks. So we might go check that out as well. Hello, All right, we've just pulled up at the Casuarina Square shopping center because that's the closest Kmart and we're going to try and find some goggles and we forgot the towels. They're back at the caravan park. So instead of going all the way back, we're going to see if they've got some towels as well. This place like the fountain gate of Darwin. It's fucking massive. There's heaps of shops. All of the googlies are sold out. Absolutely nothing. A few pairs left. But Holly really wants me to get these. They've only got one pair of full-on face goggles. <laughs> mm. I don't think they'll fit you, but they are cute. Yeah, they're bluey. Oh, we'll just find one. I'll just block They've my got nose. Those. Yeah. All right, we ended up just getting a pair of goggles and some pegs because we didn't have any pegs. And when we've been at caravan parks and wanting to do washing, and it's windy like today, we had to borrow um, someone else's pegs, Craig's pegs, who we met there. Um, so we got our own pegs and some goggles for Kev. Um, and then I don't think I'm going to worry about the rain repellent because I can't find it anywhere. So it'll be what it'll be. All right, apparently it's about 250 meters up here on the left. Which is funny because when we came here to get some ginger biscuits and ginger ale before we went on the fishing charter, we literally came to this exact spot. So, in the middle of the city, oh, it's just here. There it is. So, we'll try and find a park. Guys, this is a freaking nightmare. We're literally in the like middle of a city and there is just people everywhere. And I can't believe, we're literally just saying, I can't believe there's a reptile park in the middle of the city with crocodiles and everything. Like, just literally in the middle of the city like if you're from melbourne it's like collins street and there's literally just like a crocodile park in the middle and all of the parks are two hour parks until 5 p.m and the time's two o'clock so it wouldn't be bad if it was three o'clock because then by the time it hit five um the time frame wouldn't matter but we're going to try and find a three hour park um go left uh, we finally found a freaking spot we had to pay six dollars and 13 cents for parking for three hours and now we're walking towards the joint all right just signed in and got our wristbands. Crocosaurus cave, we're gonna go through this cave. There's a little croc there, I didn't even see him. There's a big old snake up there. It's so hard to see in here, like this video actually makes it look very bright in here, but it's so dark. <laughs> Oh wow, wow, it's like a little water. Oh, there's stingrays up there. Oh, how cool are these? Oh, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> Holy shit. That was out of nowhere. Oh my god. Hey, buddy. Wow, look at how thick that glass is. Wow, his tail's all the way back here. That thing is huge. That's my hand underneath his stomach. Look how big this is. I was just trying to film the perspex. Because they've got a couple of leaks in here. Oh, look. A bit of water happening. That was scary. A couple of barrels. Oh, I had a big ray in there. Is that a barrel? That's huge. Yeah. Wow. Pretty. Look, it's like now. Oh, yeah. Hey, buddy. Look at the stingray just getting around. Wow. Hey. Ran off somewhere. I'll start there. A couple of little ones here. They're all floating this heap, so. Oh, the first one's a bit there. scratched, so. Down on the floor. Oh, yeah, he's down in the rock there. Hey, buddy. So many crocodiles. Just come into a little bit of a museum here. This is a broad snouted 
Crocodile. That's a very short nose. This is the skeleton of a 15 foot male. So many different heads. We just held a baby croc and got some photos, so Holly's just seeing which one she wants. They take photos for you at a cost. And you pick the best ones that you want. Couple of turtles. Fella's name's Wendell. He's missing a foot there on his front left. He is massive. There's two people about to do the cage of death. It's just there. I'm not going to put it up and film them. But there's that big gator down there. Bad way he knows what's up. He's turning and going. He's coming to the surface. They caught one at 5 o'clock and I thought watching might help me. I'm pretty nervous. <laughs> <laughs> mm. They put their food in a lunchbox for you, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well, so Corey is downstairs, so we're going to go down for a dive. Yeah, this one's easy. Oh my god. This is my alley. What do we got in here? Gwena is very good at hiding. Really? I can't find him. It's hard to see, but there's a western taipan just under that rock there. Can only just get him. This is a death adder. It's just tucked in the corner. It looks pretty. This is just a normal type hand. He's got a skinny head, doesn't he? I love how they made the nice habitat and the little trees and leaves and stuff. Oh wow, this guy's big. Spencer's Goanna, they call it. It's beautiful, all the patterns on him. He's your typical little skink. Long nose dragon, he just ran up, he just staring at me. Look at his back feet. Australia's largest lizard. Oh, he's shedding too, his skin's coming off. Just on top there. I'm just 
the street every day, blue tongue, big fat toe. There's a western ground snake tucked in there. He's quite nice looking. So Ali's just disappeared and I found her here. Oh, a nacho. Nacho. Hey, buddy. Now I've got Nacho. He's early, hang on. He's not focusing. Oh yeah, there we go. <laughs> what if he jumps? She said just put your hand gently over the top of him if he starts to move. Where'd his tongue go? <laughs> his name's Donald, is Good it? Nope, right. His name's Nacho. Yeah. Now Hull's got Donald. I'm okay, thank you. Donald Trump. <laughs> Donald Trump. <laughs> He's trying to wriggle back to you. There's another big fella. Here he is. He's escaping. Blue tongue lizards, these ones. These are the northern blue tongue lizard. So we don't get these, we get the eastern. I think. Is it eastern that we get at home? Oh, they're over there, the ones we get around the corner. Hello, buddy. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> don't touch the glass. You have to clean that. This one's a lace monitor. He's really pretty. Have a look at him. Almost looks like a zebra. Kev said he already filmed this one shedding his skin, but you can see him wriggling around. That's pretty cool. You don't get to see that every day. This is Peru. This is the one that climbed on top of us earlier. And he's big, large, and in charge. Imagine having a lounge room or cinema room set up like this. And he's got this big five metre crop just sitting out there. We are currently just chilling out, waiting Wait, for our turn. This bloke blowing bubbles out his nose. Watch him snoring. Alright, I'm going to put this camera away because we're going to use a GoPro anyway. <laughs> Guys, we're so scared. Okay, so we're in the cage. It's a bit echoey. And we're going in with Leo, who apparently loves pink, so it would just be my luck. Yeah, we're gonna cost them bubbles. <laughs> oh, still we We keep laughing, but fuck, I am actually shaking right now. So, oh my god, okay, we'll be alright. Guys, Leo's seen us. And we've been told that he loves, <laughs> loves pink. And I've got pink on these up. I don't push it over here. Oh fuck, he's around here. Yeah, come <laughs> here. Oh yeah, he's already nice now. Is he? Uh, don't, don't, don't stitch me up. Oh good. <laughs> I like the pink. <sighs> Don't you get me, Leo. Cool, he is. Well. Over. I only missed an absolute beauty of a shot. Well, we agreed to put the GoPro away and then, and yeah. then the shot happened. But I think the, hopefully the photographer got it. He knows, his nose was like right here and it yeah. just like came at us and then he decided he wanted to mount. That was so much fun though, it was really good. <laughs> Righto, it's all done. 
That was really good. Really good. The water wasn't too cold actually, it was actually beautiful. I was a little bit nervous at the start and a bit worried when they were like taking us over but then as soon as we went in the water and had a little bit of a dive underneath I just relaxed and it was yeah, awesome. It was all good. And then afterwards the guy um, then proceeds to tell us that we were with the, with the most dangerous croc out of all of them and how if anyone was going to kill you it would be, him. be him. And yeah. how the keepers have to work there for like multiple years before they're even allowed to go near him so that was good. <laughs> yeah but we're done we're going to walk back to the car this town's going off at the moment it's a Tuesday night and it's yeah. still going off. Hello team. Ah, oh, what a busy day. We've left our wonderful caravan park at Lee Point. Um, There's still fireworks going off last night, even though it was the second, so people have been naughty and letting them off. Um, we said goodbye to our neighbour Craig and another bloke, Neil, and the other couple that were next to us. Um, we ended up picking up all of our fish. So we need to try and squeeze that in the freezer. I don't think we will be able to, but we're just gonna have to try and eat as much as we can. Cause there's like um, four A4 sheets worth, but like that thick in Ziploc bags, if that makes sense. Probably not. Um, and yeah, we, we gotta go shopping. And then when we picked up the fish, um, Jordan, the lovely, wonderful bloke and owner of offshore boats in Darwin, he, gave us a heap of um, points of interest to stay and have a look at so we're trying to map it all out once we go in the shops here and figure out what we're going to do but he he gave us a lot of good spots that not many people know about and a lot of free camping spots like we're going to go to Dundee Beach but he said he honestly wouldn't bother because yeah it's cool it's a beach there's a pub there but he said it's not really worth going to there's nowhere you can swim or anything so he gave us a few highlighted points so yeah Stay tuned, we are going to go shopping and put all this stuff in the freezer slash fridge. Today's shopping's done, fish put away, just, only just fit. There were some big pieces there, I reckon one of them must have been from that absolute monster one because it was like the size of a frying pan wide. Um, shopping wasn't too bad, $154 roughly, so that was pretty good I thought. But obviously we Love didn't have fish. to buy yeah, meat or anything. so. Anyway, we're going to be off. Alright, I'm a little bit sleepy because the sun's coming on the car really nice and made me all toasty so I was half falling asleep but um, when we're having a chat to Jordan and picking up the fish he shared a few secret locations with us that he's asked us not to share so we won't do that. Um, but yeah, a couple of them are some nice spots um, that he thinks are really quiet and yeah, worth having a look at. So we're just checking one out now which is near Litchfield um, and yeah, the route in is quite nice. Definitely has the Litchfield feel about it with all the similar trees that we had at our um, Wangi cabins day. So we'll see where this road takes us. It's pretty cool, we're literally driving on the track and then out the window is just the beach there. We're coming up to some mangroves and things. Um, but yeah, so cool. Lots of camp spots. Yeah, there's heaps of camp spots along here. Um, it's not listed on wiki camps, um, it's just one that obviously if you know it, you know it. So, But it's beautiful, lots of shady areas to escape the hot sun as well. I'm going to give this to Kev because he's got a bit of a closer view. I don't know, if, oh, there's too many trees and grass at the moment. Um, there's a clear patch coming up ahead. We just passed the car with um, a lot of grey pots in that. So. Apparently this spot is good for crabbing. You get a lot of mud crabs in there. But there's also a chance of crocs. So I don't think I'll be putting my one net in there have palm trees or whatever these trees are called and the dirt road and then just behind there mangroves and the sand on the beach and the water. Water so blue. It like. is really blue. Very nice looking but you can't swim in it. Hello we ended up driving all the way to the end and there's a couple of people with a quad bike and a Suzuki dirt bike fishing. There's a nice little creek at the end there. Um, there's plenty of camp spots all around here We've seen their car way up there, so I'm tipping they rode their quad and dirt bike up there. Um, but yeah, we've ended up just pulling up here, so what a view. Lots of dead grass, and there is bushfire over there. Just a little fan burn off sort of thing, so let's keep an eye on that. The wind is blowing this way, but we can always drive down to the beach. There's literally an entrance right there. Nice little swing. 
crocodiles here. Now uh, you can catch blue salmon here apparently. I don't even know. I probably won't even go for fish. I really can't be bothered. Time to pull the surf right out, put it together, put the rod, put the reel on the rod. And then we don't have any bait, we threw it out so we could get um, a bit more freezer room. So we can fit all our mackerel in there, but I could use a bit of mackerel, but that's a bit of a waste on such a beautiful, delicious fish. So, yeah, this is us. Holly's still in there, soaking up the cold air con. It's actually not too hot today, probably because of this wind. But yeah. He's smart ass. He's got the music down there in a beer and he's calling out to me to get him another one. <laughs> When you're ready, get me another beer. Yeah, right, mate. You got the two legs. This is fucking awesome. <laughs> it's Liberty's best life down there. Back on to some uh, nice, wonderful mackerel for dinner. Um, last night, Craig made dinner for us, and it was honey soy chicken or something like that. And it was fucking amazing it's honey soy chicken and fried rice he marinated the chicken for ages and oh it was with rum and everything it yeah was, oh, it was and the beautiful. fried rice was to die for we'll have to pop a picture up on the screen so you guys can see but yeah this is um just a bit of gray mackerel this ain't a uh, spanish mackerel this one's a gray one Apparently they taste different, but we're not sure. I think this is the first one, first grey one we've tried, so we'll let you know. How are you going to cook it, Kev? Uh, a bit of Holly's famous batter and probably just a salad. Sounds good. I can't be bothered doing chips or anything. You don't want chips? Nah. Nah. How's the view? Kev's whipped up this fish and salad. Well, you, you did the fish. And it is very good. It's a little bit more fishy, I think, than the... Spanish mackerel but honestly it's not that fishy like on a scale of zero being like chicken and ten being like tuna it would probably be a two or a three like it's not that bad there's just a slight fishy taste whereas a Spanish mackerel I didn't taste any but still absolutely beautiful Hang on. That. so good sunset in the background mm. what more could you ask for hey all right dinner's done uh, had a picnic bar for dessert that Holly had to buy, so I just ate that. Uh, I'm thinking I'm just going to fly the drone quickly because it's not an amazing sunset, but we haven't had the drone out in a while due to all the um, national park rules and that. So I think we'll just fly up, have a quick spin of it, and see what we can do with the landscape around here. We've driven a fair way up the road now and um, we found a sign that says B24-J Liberator Aircraft Wreck Site. So apparently this plane is from World War II days and it is crashed somewhere up here. So we're going to go have a look. We have arrived. Bits of plane everywhere as we assumed there would be. Don't know how else going to pick all of these. That is up. Sort of like a 3D plaque, so I'll give that a read. Plane's name was Milady. Bits and bobs of it everywhere. There's even some over there. It's just heaps of bits scattered everywhere. Most signs, like in front of the piles, will tell you what exactly it is they're laying down. It's pretty cool, it actually says like in a cooler assembly and then shows you all the bits and bobs that make it all up. That's awesome. It's more elaborate than some Kentworth diagrams. It's a bit of stainless. That's why it hasn't rusted or anything. Because that's like a hundred years old. Nearly. Yeah. I don't know if anyone knows what that is. Let us know. What was it? 1945 or something? Is that what it said on the things? 
Oh, I'll check. I'm pretty sure. 1945. If that's the case, that's nearly 100 years old. Well, if you take the shot. But... Vertical bomb rack. <laughs> Hmm, that's pretty sad, isn't it? How did it crash? I don't know, it just says that it crashed. It doesn't say how. Alright guys, that brings us to the end of another episode. Obviously, if you like our content, please give us a like, share and subscribe. Hoorah! Hoorah!